Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing well today. Um, I want to share a little something with you. Um, I hope that this helps. Um, I really believe in self-awareness and it's not so much just about self-awareness, it's about the key to self-awareness. The key to self-awareness is really about what you do with the information pertaining to yourself okay that's really the the key um a lot of people you know can be assholes and they know that they're an asshole but they choose not to do anything about being an asshole you know some people know that they have a chaotic life and they don't do anything about being chaotic or living from that particular space for whatever reason um and so when you are aware of yourself and aware of the actions, you tend to either A, like I said, do nothing about it, or you begin to use the information. If it's, if it's something that you believe that is positive, that can help you, you use the information even more so that you can gain access to other levels of consciousness, experiences, or whatever. Um, or you use that information to change something about yourself because you know that it is not conducive to your lifestyle, okay? So this is what, you know, really being self-aware is. I've become so much more self-aware when I began to really like study my chart, study who it is that I am and understanding that certain the way certain planets were aligned the day that I was born is the reason why certain things happen within my own universe you know hopefully that makes sense to you but we'll get into that a little bit more i asked a question um do you look for the good in everything and not I was not looking for anything in specific just really want to know who's in my space because certain questions that I ask um, I always want to know what people think um, I also try and get other people to think and so when I asked that question you know there were varied um, answers one thing I'd like to share is that seeing is really internal um, seeing is about your perspective rather than the objective but most people um, do it in reverse they see from the outside rather than from in the inside and the more that you are aware that you do that the more that you can bring your your awareness or your your seeing back from the internal space so let me give you a couple examples or try to explain that a little bit more the way that I see you, and if I respond to you based upon what I'm seeing, then what happens with, with that is that if you're having a bad day, then I'm going to have a bad day. And the reason why I'm having a bad day, because whatever is going on with you, I see that. I see that and I react and I respond from that particular space. What happens with that is that you are actually responding with somebody or you know based upon somebody's actions from a particular period or time in their life that's my dog Bosley she's being a dog Bosley Bosley good girl good girl they're not gonna come in here good girl they're just on the outside and again <laughs> she's letting the outside affect her and what's going on in here when there's clearly nothing going on in here there's clearly there's peace there's harmony going on in here but she's allowing the outside to get in the inside and so that's what most people do so if you're always looking to what's going on and not being able to see um the good you know that is that really is going on um, then what happens is you respond from that space and again looking from the outside in is not a good way to live your life looking from the inside out is the best way to live you know your life so looking and seeing that um, maybe somebody is 
being upset with you or they're going off on you or whatever the case may be sometimes the ego says well let me just let me just draw raw and get back with them but it takes a lot of energy to raw raw and get back with them when you can stay in this space and let your ego die down because you realize that that person you know when you're really into psychology you understand that people they're triggered by certain things you understand that people have lived from certain spaces and times in their life 98 to 99 percent of us somewhere between the ages of seven and 12 suffered some type of trauma the people that and there you can it can happen earlier or it can happen later but there are some people that nothing happened to because their their parents were aware of traumas and heal some things within their lives so they didn't bring their children into a space of having to deal with trauma and they've taught them how to deal with outside potential outside trauma so, and you can't help, don't get me wrong, you can't help certain things from the outside that happen. You know, you can, the only thing that you can really um, control is how you respond to those things that happen. So, knowing that most people have had some type of trauma that happened to them between the ages of 7 and 12. You understand that they could be 50, they could be 60, they could be 70, they could be old as hell and still living from that particular space you arguing with someone or allowing them to affect your peace from the inside you're going you are giving not only giving them the power to do so but you're arguing arguing with a seven-year-old or a 12 year old some person in between you're not really talking with a healed person so if you're arguing with them, what happens is your unhealed parts and their unhealed parts are just rah, rah, rahing at each other when you can't hear them, they can't hear you, and nobody's going to change. No one is going to change. So in that particular perspective, when things are happening outside of you, you have the ability to either A, walk away and say, I'm going to have a beautiful day, or oh, I'm glad that I was there for them. Some people can't get with this. But you have to be a very enlightened person or a high vibrational space in a higher vibrational space to where you can understand this. Where you say, ah, poor them. They're still suffering from that trauma that happened to them between the time that they were 7 and 12. And you feel even worse when they're in their 60s or their 70s because you feel like they may die still in that particular trauma and never getting healed from that. So when you look at people from that space, that is such a heartfelt space. It really is. And most people don't, if you can't live from your heart, if you can't, you know, understand, you know, sometimes where people are, you, you live your life where they're at. So if they go to the seven-year-old person or that 12-year-old person that was hurt or they, you know, have dealt with a parent who was pretty much an asshole, who beat them, who, or neglected them in some way, shape, or form, and they never, you know, felt like they were in control of their life when they were younger. So now they rushing and everything is about control for them. When you begin to really understand the psychology of people, you begin to understand that let me look for the good in this. Let me look for the good in this situation. Let me understand that, hey, they're speaking from that seven-year-old person or that 12-year-old person. They're not really talking as a healed person. I'm glad that I was there in order for them to be able to um, get that out, um, for them to be able to whatever, if that's the case. You know, looking for the good in things is not about the external. It's all about how you feel from the from the internal space and being able to see not only with your third eye, but to also be able to, to feel, to be able to feel, to understand that, that some people are in some bad spaces, you know, and if you're going back and forth with them, you're kind of in some bad spaces as well. There's something about you that is unhealed as well. So, and maybe they triggered some, that unhealed space within you. So now you're going back and forth with them when you really shouldn't. 
But seeing the good thing, cause seeing the good in everything that happens allows you to move from a different space. So don't you don't always move from such a lower level of thinking, from a lower space or from some trauma or from some person just saying something idiotic to you. When you begin to see the good in things that happen, even things that, you know, you wanted to happen for you, but it didn't, you know, you can now say, well, well, that didn't happen. Well, at least now I get to go do such and such and such. So looking for the good in things is not about, you know, being unrealistic about what's happening. Yes, you can see what really is going on, but you can also say, well, now I get the opportunity of doing this, or I'm glad I was there for that particular person, um, or changing it up to see the good in something, you know, just to see the good in it, only because that allows you to, to be and live and breathe from a different space. You know what I mean? It really does. It allows you to live and be and breathe from a different space. Ego will have you running around here rampant. Not saying that you don't need ego because you need ego. You need everything. You need good. You need bad. You know, that's why that's why it's here. That's why the good and the bad is here. You know, because you have to have some type of balance. If it's good all the time or it's bad all the time, that's there's no balance in that. There really is no balance in that. So you have to to every to every situation, to everything, every person, there is good and bad. Even the pastors, even the preachers, even the gurus, you know, they're still maybe trying to, you know, um work through some things within themselves, but there is always a potential for the negative to occur. That's because we have an, a, a, um, a positive and a negative charge within us. And everything does. Everything. So even the word good can be bad. Even the word good can be good. Even the word perfection, you know, could be perfect or it could really be not perfect. It's how you see it. It's really how you see it. And the more that you look from your internal eyes and not from your external eyes, you will begin to grow and to live and to be more aware and conscious of things that um are in your vortex that are coming you know that are coming for you so anyway um i don't know if that helped or not but i just wanted to share with you guys that you know just try to look for the good in things and don't get me wrong again i know that some people like to live from that chaotic or unhealed space um, and most often we don't want to be around those people who live from that particular space, but being around those particular people sometimes allows them to see a different, a different, um, way of being. Um, it also kind of sharpens our, our skills too, because, you know, when I feel happy, when somebody kind of go off and, you know, I just look at, you know, either laugh and keep it moving or just be like, oh, I hate that for you. I really hate that for you. And then, you know, be able to move away from that situation. What happens to me is like, I'm like, Ooh, look, I handled that. You know, I handled that. Well, you know, I, I did, I did what I believe was the best thing to do. Now, again, some people like to live from that particular space. They like to live from their unhealed, toxic, um, energy, and that's them, you know what I'm saying? But you don't have to go there with them. You don't have to live in that particular space. You don't have to expect anything. You know, um, seeing the good in things is not about expectation. Again, it's about perspective. It's how you see things, not how things really, you know, are in that particular thing, you know, or, or could be if you thought that particular way. But seeing the good in things is allowing you to be able to, um, see things from a different perspective. Oh, I hate that that's happening, but I get to do this or I can go and do this or, you know, whatever or whatever, you know, or something that's positive. You know what I'm saying? Even though something's negative is happening, you could see something positive. Oh, okay. I didn't get, you know, that job that I wanted, but I'm not going to trip over it because that opens me up to be able to getting something more, to get something better, to get what I really deserve. Cause I thought I deserved that, but if that was not like the plan, could you imagine what the plan is? So when you're living from that particular space, you also invite a uh, more opportunity, more love, more joy, you know, um, more good to happen within your life. But if you're walking around and you can't really see the good in things, 
um, you have to begin to ask yourself, why is that? Why can't I change the narrative for myself? Because that's basically what you're doing. You're changing the narrative for yourself. Now, I don't know if any of this helps. You know, it sounded good when I was in the shower. Of course, you know, the translation from the shower to hear some things probably dropped off. It was really good when I was in the shower. But anyway, hopefully something that I said today helped you. You guys have a great day. I love you. I love, 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 love you. And I want you to have the most amazing day because you are amazing. You, 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 you are amazing.